Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Lord Winklebottom Investigate. So we are here, and our friend is dead, and we must investigate why. But first, I want to examine this room. We've got a gong. Oh, I say, a gong. Shall I gong it? Do it. I'm entirely convinced that gong is a verb, but very well, if you... Gong. Yes. You don't actually need to say gong, you know. It's for well, the well, magic I of suppose, it. suppose, but where's the fun in that? Exactly. Strange, the maid said this would call the butler, but he's nowhere to be seen. Oh. He did it. I'm assuming immediately. <laughs> Primate bus. A bust of the great Caesar. Gilfrey was most interested in ancient history. Good grief, look at his eyes. They look even more soulless than the real thing. What is it with you and primates, Trumple? Oh! A bust of the great composer, Beethoven. Not just a great composer, but an excellent at tricks too, you know. I hear he was an expert at rolling over. Aww. Good Beethoven. You've got paintings. Another fine piece of artwork from Gilfrey's collection. A nut? Who's that? Elfberta. This is a portrait of Gilfrey's late wife, Ethelberta. She died tragically young a few years ago. How did she die, anyway? It was a terrible incident involving an airship. I say, crashed with her on board? No, she flew too close to the propellers and, well, you can imagine the rest. Was she oh, wearing... Grizzly way to go. Was she wearing a cape? No capes. A painting of Gilfrey's only daughter, Constance. Oh! Wait, they and they went... Okay, maybe she's adopted. Ah, a portrait of the great fellow himself. Aww. Distinguished looking chap, eh, Winklebottom? Rest in peace. How'd you die? I say, Winklebottom, that fellow must have been going like a bomb when you ran into that wall, what? Ah. <laughs> uh, I think I've heard that one before, and it's not in very good taste. Oh dear. I suppose when you think about it, it is quite an old tradition. A little morbid, in fact. Look, the poor fellow even has some of his clothing still on him. Oh. This chap is beyond even your skills, I fear. Let's leave him be. Oh dear. So they put their heads Another up on the guy? piece of artwork from Gilfrey's collection. Alright, so the butler didn't show up. Left corridor, right corridor, drawing room, dining room, kitchen, servants' quarters. Let's start with the servants' quarters, see if we can find the butler. Uh, what is wrong with that bed? This bed is absolutely filthy. Rumble, what do you make of this? Looks like some kind of slime or mucus. I'd say this bed is used by a mollusk of some sort. Filthy buggers. Frumple! That's rude! Oh, it's a toy. This looks like a child's doll. It seems to be a cuddly axolotl. Bit of an old thing to keep around. Oh, well maybe they- I have stuffed animals, Frumple. Sometimes it's just the comfort. Okay, the butler wasn't in there. What about the kitchen? Ooh. I'd kill for a kitchen like this. Open the door. Ooh, coal. I'll take some of that. I can't just cause them to spontaneously combust. When I was in the calf scouts, we'd make fires by rubbing twigs together. I see. And do you have any twigs handy? Ugh, you don't have to poo-poo all my ideas, you know? Yeah. Wait, why are we blowing up? Okay, well, I'm always down for some anarchy. Oh, God. Trumple, look at this. This is terrible. What? What is it? They're keeping red wine in the refrigerator. This is sacrilege. What? Oh, is that all? I thought you found something important. It is important, I think. Hardened butter. I'll take that. A block of butter. Might be useful. It's rock solid, however. I like it when it's solid. Easier to take a bite out of it, dinner. not Frumple, you're content- You're further concerning me with each thing you say. A bit cupboard. Just some modern ends. Nothing useful. What about this one? Interest in here. What about this one? Matches! Oh, there are some matches in this box. I'll take these, or rather this. There only seems to be one match left. Alright, maybe we could use those for the coals. And some plates. Just some crockery. Uh, what were that? Fruit? A bowl of fruit. You know what they say, Frumple. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well, doesn't seem to have worked, does it? <laughs> Dumb waiter. Just open this hatch. Oh. Ugh, blasted thing won't stay open. Ah, we need something to hold it open with. A kettle. At least we know we can make more tea if we need to. Oh, that's a relief. I feel like I've been nursing this cup for hours now. Though I'll make it next time and put the milk in first and like you meant to. Rude. But understandable. Um, let's see if we can use the matches on the coals. Need a steady hoof to do this as there's only one match left. 
There we go, the cooker is heating up nicely now. Oh, nice. Do I put the butter? I'd really rather not. Alright. Well, let's slide the door open. This door appears to be locked. Most irritating. Dang it. Yes, quite so. Wonder where it leads to. Hmm. Take a pan? Frumpley, you're the food expert. Do you think we should take this with us? As you wish, but don't expect me to know what to do with it. I'm rather more interested in the end results and the process, you know? <laughs> He's like, do whatever the hell you're doing. I'm just gonna tr take my tea. Alright, let's put the saucepan on the cooker. Let's put the pan on the stove top. Or you could say it fancier than me. And butter. How thrilling. I've always wanted to try my hoof at cooking. Ah, look, Frumpel, the heat has melted the butter into an oily liquid. Nice. Can I take that? I'll take the pan of butter. I can hardly pick this up with my bare hooves. We'll need something to soak it up, I wager. Ah, well, got what it. What about your mane? That's probably absorbent. That's a disgusting thought, Frumpel. A buttery, oily mane. I don't think there's anything else in here that we can uh, get, so let's look around. We need, a, we need something to get the butter. All right, dining room. We want, let's try the dining room. Oh, there's people here. Have a dashery bag. Dame Celia, Madame Levian, Lavinia. Another painting, fireplace. A roaring hot fire, very cozy. We could have melted our butter right here. This tube is part of the network of pipes Guilford used to get around the house. Being amphibious, he preferred to stay in these as much as possible. Ingenious system, mind you. Ah. Oh. Hi, Celia. Greetings. Greetings, madam. What's that, young man? Speak up. I said hello. Greetings, greetings madam. No, it's no good. No diction. That's the problem with you young people. You need to learn to project, my boy. Well, you're a bit of a We're diction. Not very far here, Winklebottom. My diagnosis is the old bird is deaf as a post. Oh. I'm so glad to have you here, Frumpel. I've no idea how I would manage without your expert opinion on such matters. <laughs> oh, thank you, old thing. All right, bye. Well, thank you for your time, madam. Don't yell at me. What's that? Move your head closer. I can't hear you all the way up there. Uh, I say, Winklebottom, do you know who this is? It's Dame Celia Wellington Boot. I'm sure I have no idea. But she's famous. Oh. Dame Celia was a star of the stage. I have quite the crush on her as a young calf. Oh, and she don't know, it, she can't hear us. Dame Celia's haberdashery bag. Knitting, sewing, wool, threads and such like. Could we take some? Oh, I guess we can't. Hi, Lavinia. Dame Celia. What can you tell us about the lady sat over there? Oh, I can't get a word out of her. The old bat needs some sort of hearing aid, if you ask me. That's an There's understatement. Hearing aids are a miracle of science. Some are barely larger than a briefcase, you know. Oh, God. <laughs> Greetings. You are Lord Winklebottom, are you not? I say, that's amazing. Did you see all that in your crystal ball? Or a message from the spirits, perhaps? No, I saw an article about you in the newspaper earlier today. Well, that'll do it. Well, yes, I, I suppose that will also work. <laughs> anyway, I am very pleased to meet you. I'm Madame Lavinia, and I am a spirit medium. Well, quite. Uh, Gilfrey. What can you tell me about Gilfrey? Oh, that poor soul. Such tragedy in this household. First my dear Ethelberta, and now Aristotle. Their daughter must be devastated. Quite so. Very sad business all round. Very sad. Very sad. What's your connection to Gilfrey? I've known Ethelberta since she was a duckling. I have no idea why darling Aristotle invited me today, though. None at all. He seems to be inviting a lot of people for some reason. Thank you for your time. Alright, we've got a vase of flowers. Mind if I take that? I suppose a tiny nibble wouldn't hurt. No, I didn't mean eat- That thing, you'll get your head stuck in that bars. I say you're right. Yes, my head goes all the way in. I can eat the stalks, too. No! Oh. Well, we'll take the vase, then. There's nothing left to eat in this vase. You're addicted, man. <laughs> um, crystal ball. I believe these are used to see into the future. Rather a pity they can't see into the past, so we could find out what happened to Gilfrey. I say, Frumpel, I can see a mist starting to fall in this. Oh! Oh, boy, that's just your monocle steaming up because of the heat from the fire. Oh. Oh, then we probably shan't get any answers this way. Dang it. A clock. Touch the clock. If I turn the hands, I can make the clock chime. Do it. Now everyone will think it's 15 minutes later than it actually is. 
What changed? I guess nothing right now. This painting is called Adventure Awaits, apparently. Huh. Personally, I could do with a bit less adventure in my life. You saying you don't like hanging out with me? You got the boat a well. Um, we've got Celia, apparently a famous actress. Apparently, I like how he put that. You didn't have to say that. All right, let's go back to the hallway. All right, we've been to these places. What about the drawing room? Oh, Reverend Peabody, Sir Winslet. Oh, and the oh the oh no, he's dead in there. He's still here. Oh, if we could break this, we could give her the hearing aid. I say, Winkabottom, I wonder if these chaps know what happened to Gilfrey. You could ask, but I doubt they'd hear, and I don't suppose they saw anything anyway. And if they did, they wouldn't say. Oh, ha ha, I get it. Gramophone. One of those newfangled gramophone players. The music plays through this trumpet. Modern technology is wonderful. Just look how tiny it is. Oh, buddy, you have no idea. Cupboard. Now, let us have a look in here. Oh. oh just some papers. How boring. Not inherently so, but in this case, yes. They don't seem to be of any great interest. Although it does seem odd that they're in such a mess. It's almost as if somebody had been rummaging through them in a hurry. Huh. Best way, in my opinion, gets it out of the way. I much prefer reading things with nice pictures in them. Medical books have some excellent drawings. One would hope that you at least glance at the words, mind you. Yeah, you're supposed to be a doctor, Frumpel. Ooh, a distinguished gentle bird. Ah, this chap is Lord Malcolm Schmidt. I've met him in a house a number of times. A great speaker, although I'm not sure all this makes a good deal of sense. Looks most distinguished. Very yes, distinguished. Not so much when food is around, it can get quite raucous at times. <laughs> I love birds. We've got a naval photograph and a wedding photograph. Ah, look at him here, the pride of the Admiralty. They say he had the sea running through his veins. Oh, well he did. Ah, look at this, it's Gilfrey and Ethelbert on their wedding day. A splendid time was had by all, I can assure you, Frumple. Such a tragedy, Gethelbert had passed away so young. Yes, terrible business. Just terrible. Alright, we got an award too. An award for Amphibian of the Year. A finer amphibian you could never hope to meet, eh, Frumple? Aww. Books. A collection of books. Nothing of any great interest right now. Hmm. Why is there one blue one up there? Fiction books. Various works of fiction. These are most likely Ethelbert's. Aristotle preferred his scientific tones instead. Ugh, Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Read it at school, toad it all rot. Don't mind the one with the two lovers from rival families of mongooses and capybaras, though. I love capybaras. Armor. A relic of the Great Frog Wars. Gilfrey was most fond of ancient history. I say, that axe he's carrying would do you a real mischief if he got on the wrong end of it. We've got a box, a photograph. I say, look at this old boy. It's Gilfrey and I during our school days. Ah, those were happy times. Aww. Not for me. He couldn't abide school. The other boys used to make fun of my name. Dumple, they call me. The Rotters. What a bunch of dicks. We've got a box. Ah. Oh. Hmm. I don't... Yeah, I don't know exactly what we're supposed to do for this first. So we'll you know, Frumple, I'm not sure we have all the information. Yeah, I don't think we do. Um, alright, let's start talking to people. Reverend Peabody. Greetings! Greetings, sir. Ah, hello, my child. I am most pleased to make your acquaintance at this sad, sad time. Pleased to meet you. I'm Lord Winklebottom III, and this is my colleague, Dr. Reginald Frumple. Bless you, my children. I am Reverend Archibald Peabody. Um, alright, let's ask about Gilfrey first. Do you know why Gilfrey invited you here today? Oh, I'm afraid I wouldn't know. I've not heard from him for a few years until just recently when he wrote to me out of the blue. I know he had something to announce, but I'm afraid I don't know what. Huh. Most intriguing, to be sure. What about the other guests? Do you know any of the other guests? I believe I may have seen Madame Lavinia at some interfaith conference or other, but not to speak to. Other than that, I'm afraid not. Hmm. All right. Well, thank you for your help. Well, thank you for your time, Reverend. Oh, yes, quite so, my boy. Quite so. All right. What about you, you distinguished gentle cat? Greetings. Ah, Winklebottom, isn't it? I've written reports about your exploits for my newspaper. Oh, really? And which of our adventures have you covered? <laughs> Sorry, old thing. Not sure I recognize you. Oh, Frumple. poor Frumple. Doctor Frumple? 
You said you'd covered our cases. Oh, that's right. You're the gentleman's gentleman, yes? We're partners. Equal partners. Blasted hack. All right, Trumbull. Pleased to meet you, sir, but I'm afraid you have me at a disadvantage. Winslet's the name, old thing. Pleased to meet you, sir. I say, it's true what they say, then. About you preferring to walk on all fours. <laughs> Bit old-fashioned these days, what? I just happen to think it's rather more refined. Plus he'd bash it bumps on the ceiling if he tried to walk in the modern style. Oh, <laughs> true. You are rather tall already. And how do you know, Gilfrey? Do you know why you're invited here today? In reverse order, I'm not a blasted clue, and I'm engaged to his daughter Constance. Oh. You're a journalist, you say? Could that be the reason you're here? <laughs> Might be, old boy. The old fellow wasn't entirely taken with me, truth be told. But if he wanted somebody to get the word out about something, <laughs> I'd certainly fit the bill. You didn't get along with Gilfrey then? Well, I mean, I've never actually met him, you understand. Oh. This is the first time Constance has brought me to the island. But I'm sure he wouldn't approve of me. Crikey, my own family don't. So why would somebody else's? Why did Constance bring you to the island? So you're engaged young Constance over there. Oh, Winklebottom, I'm a changed cat since meeting her. I was quite the party animal, but fair to say, she's tamed me. You didn't get on with the Admiral, though. It was nothing he said, you understand, but I don't think he approved. Don't have a lot of luck with family. Even my own disinherited me. I say, that's rather harsh of them. Too many parties, I suppose. And being a journalist <laughs> is not exactly an appropriate job for somebody of my status. Most unfortunate. I get to keep the time. I'm a baronet, don't you know? But I'm afraid this left me rather cash poor. Oh no. Alright, well thank you for your assistance. Thank you for your time. Alright, let's let's examine the body. Pipe. Nothing to be done for the poor fellow until we can drain the water, I fear. Oh, okay. We'll have to get him out of there if I'm to do an autopsy. Can't very well determine the cause of death just by gawping him through the glass, you know. True, alright, we won't look at oh, let's go to the let's talk to Constance. Oh. I'm gonna steal these. Let's take these with us. Indeed. It will be sheer folly to leave them. Hey. I say, sheer folly. No, I got it. I got it. I got it. I understood. Actually, I believe they're secateurs. Oh, we got a cactus, tropical pitcher plant, flytrap plant, hose pipe. Can I take that? I don't really want to look around in time. Okay, fine. We won't. Constance! How are you? Greetings. I mean, your dad just died, so... Our most sincere condolences on your sad loss. Oh, if it isn't Lord Winklebottom. Father talked about you often. And you must be Mr. Frumple? Uh, doctor, actually. Uh, that is, I mean, uh, sorry for your loss, miss. First mother and now this. I think we must have done something unspeakable in a past life to suffer so much pain in this one. Don't you agree, Lord Winklebottom? There has been some terrible tragedy here, I agree, but I fear there may be some more earthly causes for the most recent one, at least. You think there's villainy at work here? We don't know yet, however, his death was quite a shock, as, as far as I know, he was fit as a fiddle before he died. In any case, Dr. Frumple will be able to tell us more. Yeah, I think, if you don't mind, I'd just like to be left alone for a while. Okay, I'm sorry. Goodbye for now, Miss Gilfrey. Alright, we need to figure out what to do. We've talked to most everybody. We need to clear those pipes. Oh, we could go to the, down the halls. I forgot about that. How do I leave the room? Help. Help me out. Ah, there we go. Alright, left corridor. Oh! There's a lot of cats and dogs! Say, Frumble, this is a portrait of King Alec, the most popular monarch in his day. Oh, indeed so. A very good old boy, as I understand it. A very good say, boy. Frumple, a good boy indeed. A very good boy. Are these, like, pets from the devs? <laughs> a painting of one Max the Tux Sheldon. I say, didn't this fellow help us out in a case once? Indeed so. Quite a respectable chap now, but had a bit of a murky past, I recall. Yes, gave us some information about a particularly loathsome fellow who'd been running a smuggling ring. Oh. A portrait of Vetus Barnus. Maybe somebody Gilfie knew from his military days. Looks like a pretty tough brave sword to me, at any rate. Seems like a most agreeable fellow. Alright, what's the store? Bathroom. Oh, a tube. Maybe we could use that. Medicine cupboard. Medicine bottle. I'll just take this. 
You know, I can prescribe medication if you need it. You don't have to go around stealing drugs from dead people. It's an empty bottle, Frumple. <laughs> it's fine. I swear. There's a toilet, toilet seats, a tube. Part of Gilfrey's pipe network. This one must have allowed him to easily get into the bath. Looks like great fun. Would be better with a moped at the end of it, though. Toilet. I don't wish to go right now, and certainly not with Frumble standing here. Oh, you're no fun. Nexus. <laughs> uh, bedrooms. The guest bedrooms are all down here. I suppose we should investigate. Don't know why we bother. Even the daftest criminal isn't stupid enough to leave incriminating evidence lying around his own bedroom. Well, that's for us to find out. Well, that was a bally waste of time. What did I tell you? Uh, I know, old friend, but we had to do it. Yeah, we have to double check. All right, let's go back down to the main hallway. Oh, whoa, fancy. Ah, I do believe I've met this gentleman, a fellow by the name of Tobin. Wily looking chap. I dare say he would have a tale or two to tell. Indeed so, quite the talented wordsmith too. He throws around some most impressive verbiage. And what about you? This is a self-portrait, apparently, of a fellow by the name of Lake Cabilius. A renowned scientist and explorer. Ooh. Maybe a colleague of Gilfrey's. Perhaps so. I believe I may have met the chap once at a party held by him and his husband. Very good food, as I recall. Aww. Attic. From what I recall, this door leads to the attic. Sadly, it appears to be locked at the moment. That scares me. Why do people insist on locking doors all over the place? Most inconvenient. Nobody ever considers us. Yeah, the I ones who were breaking and entering. Wasn't expecting to die, so probably wasn't anticipating our investigation. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, I, I suppose the whole thing is rather more inconvenient for him. Yeah, Frumple. Study. Oh, who are you? Spode. A diving suit. Indicator light. Egg photo. Looks like our dear friend Inspector Culver has solved another case. It seems this was an international case. He was aided by a foreign chap named Inspector Waffles. Oh. I'd go for a waffle right now. Is there any time you couldn't? Coin case. I'm gonna take it. I think I'll leave these be. Not really cricket to go around stealing from a dead chap. Dang it. I mean, you've done nothing but walk around picking up things that don't belong to you since we left home this morning, but I have to draw the line somewhere, what? Aww. Maybe we could get the hint from this? Okay, no. Okay, we got Dr. Prince, Spode, Wardrobe, Wire Coat Hanger. Let's take some of those. Might come in useful, I suppose. Yeah, you can use them to unlock your, your car. Oh, an egg photo. This must be a baby photograph of Constance. Yeah, look at a little bow. No, oh, on the egg. Reference books. We could spend days looking through these books. Maybe if we had something specific to search for. True. What about the desk? Huh. Left drawer, right drawer, empty envelopes. Let's take one of these envelopes. And a rolled up paper. Oh, look. This is a map of the island. This will come in useful, I'm sure. Oh, nice. Letter opener, notepad. A notepad. Looks like the top page has been torn. Huh. Oh, you know what this means. Quick, give me a pencil. I'm going to rub over it and reveal what was written on the torn off sheet. This is my favorite. Here you go, then. It's working. It's working. Let me see now. One dozen eggs, one lettuce, a quart of milk. Well done, Frumple. You've uncovered an old shopping list. Oh, how disappointing. Oh. <laughs> Well, now we know what they were eating. Can we take the diving suit? This could be helpful. I can't really think this diving suit would fit me. Oh, the indicator light. The sign next to this light says, warning, do not open pressure valve when pump is powered. Maybe just a slight turn, just to see what happens. No, Frumple. All right, the, well then let's turn the pressure valve. Let's give this a turn and see if we can't drain the system to get Gilfrey out of there. Wait, we can't do this while the water pumps are turned on. We'd probably flood the house. Or, at the very least, I might get water in my tea. What was it? I this tube is part of the network of pipes Gilfrey used. Ingenious. Let's give this a turn and... Wait, we can't do this while the water pumps are turned on. We probably... Alright, now let's talk to the guests. Greetings. Greetings, good sir. 
Ulysses Spode of Spode, Spode, and Flavonac. At your service, sir. What a ludicrous collection of names that is. I'd say from Paul. No, oh, just insult the guy in front of him. And what part do you play in today's events? Don't rightly know, sir. Old Gilfrey wanted me to come and observe, he said. Worried there might be a spot of bother about whatever it was he was announcing. Huh. Legal bother, you mean? As you say. Wouldn't tell me in advance what the whole bally palaver was all about, though. I suppose now we'll never know. Not if I have anything to say about it. So, since I'm here anyway and the old boy's popped off, might as well sort through his paperwork and make sure everything is in order. Lots to sort out when somebody dies, you know. Especially somebody as rich as him. Alright then. We shall speak more later. Always here if you need me. What about you? Greetings, dear lady. Oh, hello. I am Lord Winklebottom III, and this is my companion, Dr. Frumple. I'm Vivian. Dr. Vivian Price. You're a doctor? Yes. Well, sort of. Not medicine. Geology. And physics. Also biology and linguistics. A few things. Whoa! Yes, well, medicine is difficult, especially for a... well, you know. Frumple. Oh, don't worry. I'm used to that sort of reaction. Oh. Your work? Were you invited here for this great announcement, too? Me? Oh, no, I live here. Well, not here in the house, but, but on the island. I, I work... I worked, I suppose, for Admiral Gilfrey. Strange, the maid didn't mention other stuff. No, she wouldn't. People tend to forget about me, you see, Mr. Winklebottom. Sometimes I think I might as well just blend into the scenery. What was the nature of your employment here? You know of Gilfrey's expeditions. I helped him examine the artifacts he brought back. Cataloging, mostly. But sometimes there'd be something more interesting. Anything recently? Could that be what he intended to announce? Some big discovery? No, nothing. I'm sure I would have known if there was something like that. I am sorry, Mr. Winklebottom. Aww. What do you know of the other people in the house? Uh, not very much, I'm afraid. I haven't really spoken to anybody. I don't even know the staff all that well. I tried talking to the gardener earlier, but oh, no. he was in a frightful temper. The gardener? You mentioned the gardener was in a bad mood. Do you know why? Oh, well, he's always kind of grumpy, you know, but he seemed perfectly livid last time I saw him. I thought he was being given the sack, I think. Oh. Or something about a vegetable patch? You should probably ask him. Thank you, miss. Alright then. Now let's see. Let's talk to the maid. I'm unsure if I've spoken to her yet, but we probably have a lot more to say now that we've talked to everybody. Uh, announcement. Do you know why we've all been invited here? Oh, I'm sorry, my lord. I don't. The master was being most mysterious about it. Something to do with his research, I'd fancy, but it's, it's all beyond me. Oh, others. Perhaps we could discuss the other people who are here. Staff. I say, I gong that gong over there, and your butler fellow didn't show up. Very well, suspicious. He's a bit on the slow side, but he's quite reliable. I hope nothing's happened to him. Who else is on the staff here? Other than Ambrose, it's just Pumphrey, the gardener. Such a shame to see the house so low on staff. Oh, my lord, you should have seen the place where my mistress was still alive. Aww. <laughs> Used to be more of you, eh? Oh, yes, sir. It's really just a skeleton staff now. The master was away so much on his travels, more so since the mistress passed away. Oh. He doesn't need a full staff these days, I'm afraid. Guests? What can you tell me about the guests here? I don't know any of them well. It's the first time we've had guests since the mistress died. God rest her soul. You're the last to arrive, so you'll find them all around the house. That's true. We did talk to Thank all of them. Much. All right. That'll be all for now, madam. Hmm. Any ideas? Old? Should probably head outside now that we've spoken to everybody in the house. Oh, that is a good idea. Let's see if we can talk to the gardener. Oh my! <laughs> Hi, Pumphrey. You are slow. I understand now. Hello, my good man. Do you mind? I have work to do. This storm is going to ruin my plants. 
Perhaps you've not yet heard, but I'm afraid you're master. Oh, I've heard. And where does that leave me? That's what I want to know. Bloody inconsiderate of him it is. Whoa! Sorry, fellow, isn't it? Alright, never mind then. Oh well then, my good fellow. Oh yes, you just go indoors. That's fine. Don't worry about me. Bloody love a storm, I do. I don't understand sarcasm. There's a key. Oh, look, there's an imprint here. Somebody must have dropped something in the wet mud. On the shape, I deduce. Oh, it's very obviously a key. There's no need to act so badly clever about it, you know? Rude. As you say, a key. Alright, well, then somebody took a key then. Interesting. We could go down to the island. But I say we're going to save that for next time. We've done a lot of investigating so far. Hopefully we'll be able to find out more in the next video. Until then, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. Remember to take care of yourselves, watch out for mud imprints, and have a good day.